Hello everyone, it's Evelyn here. Welcome back to the channel and as always, broken record time, I'd like to start by saying a massive thank you to all of you out there supporting me, whether that's by watching my content, sharing it, subscribing or liking, any of those wonderful things. Thank you so, so much. It really does mean so much to me and I'm incredibly grateful and appreciative. This week has been a pretty difficult week for me. I've always been very open about my mental health struggles and this week my anxiety and depression was doing a little bit of kicking my butt. <laughs> I've been completely overwhelmed the last few weeks, especially by all your love of my videos, particularly your love for my sweetheart dress a few weeks back. And yes, I did say that I would get into some pattern drafting here on the channel. Personally, I've been pattern drafting myself for over two decades, but when it comes to teaching other people and believing in your own skills, that's been something that's been really, really tough this week. However, I have won that battle and this week I am bringing you this tutorial on how to draft your very own bodice block from your personal measurements. This is a great thing to have in your arsenal and a fantastic skill going forward for dressmaking. And I always say that a block for a bodice or a block for trousers or a block for a sleeve or a block for a skirt is a building block. It is a solid foundation to getting into pattern cutting and drafting. If you like, these blocks are the foundation of your dressmaking pattern cutting skills. From here, this foundation can be added with bricks in any formation to make, you guessed it, any kind of dress, any kind of trousers, any kind of outfit you want. So this week we're going to create the very first part of that foundation which is the bodice block. So come along with me, let's chat supplies and get to your very first pattern drafting. I promise I'll hold your hand throughout the whole process and as always comment down below and I will do my best to help you. Let's get drafting. For pattern drafting, the supplies list really is quite minimal. You honestly don't need any professional or specialist pattern making paper. You could even just sellotape some A4 sheets together. Personally, I love using this brown packing paper, which comes in a very wide roll and is very inexpensive from places like Amazon. In terms of marking your bodice block today, I suggest you arm yourself with a pencil and eraser and a marker pen. These rulers are specialist quilting and pattern drafting rulers. And although you don't necessarily need these, they are a good investment if you want to carry on pattern drafting. Grab your paper scissors and a tape measure to take your measurements and that's all the supplies you need. So let's talk measurements. It is always helpful to have someone to help with taking your own measurements, but it is possible to do so yourself as well. My top tip here would be to take your measurements in front of a full length mirror. The measurements we need today are as follows. Back shoulder to waist, front shoulder to waist, apex to waist, apex to apex, shoulder to shoulder, neck to shoulder point, your bust and waist, and optionally your chest front and chest back measurements. So, for this part of the video, I have enlisted the help of my fabulous assistant, Betty. <laughs> Betty, I have had for 
over 15 years now um, and she was an absolute steal. She was £20 off of Amazon. So, come on, Betty. We love Betty. <laughs> and here is the wonderful Betty in action, in all her glory. Oh, and there's me. <laughs> One tip I have for you to locate your waist is to tie a ribbon around the smallest part of your torso. This also gives you a wonderful horizontal line for your future measurements as a guide. Our first measurement is from the mid shoulder to the waist going across the fullest part of the bust or the apex like so. Next, we will take the same shoulder to waist measurement, but on the back. Turning Betty to the front once more, our next measurement is from the apex to the waist, measuring from the fullest part of the bust down to the waist. Then we are going to measure apex to apex, measuring from the fullest part of one breast to the fullest part of the other. Now it's time to get our waist and bust measurements. And you can see here how helpful tying that ribbon around Betty has been. It also creates a lovely horizontal line to guide me when I measure my bust circumference. And you can see how working in a mirror would be really helpful here too. One option when drafting a bodice block is to take individual chest front and chest back measurements, which can help achieve a better fit for those of us who are more curvy. And this is what I tend to do myself because I have a minimum of 12 inches difference between my measurements. And here I am taking those measurements, measuring across the front to each side and across the back to each side. Next, we measure from shoulder point to shoulder point, doing so across the back as this tends to be broader than our front. Finally, our last measurement today is from our neck to shoulder point. It's time to get drafting. I will also pop a written precy of the instructions in the description box so you can also follow along with those as well. Laying out your pattern paper, the first thing you are going to do is plot half of your largest horizontal measurement along the bottom of your pattern paper. And to this measurement, we are going to add four inches. And we're doing this because we're going to add some darts into our pattern to make it fit well and also some ease because we want to be able to wear our garments. <laughs> So plot half of your largest horizontal measurement onto the bottom of your pattern paper. For me, that's my bust measurement, adding those four inches for darts and ease. Then what we are going to do is square up from each side of that line. And these lines will create our center back and center front. 
On the left, you are going to square up with a vertical line using and plotting your back shoulder to waist measurement, labeling this line center back like so. To the right, you are going to square up vertically, plotting your measurement of front shoulder to waist. This is your centre front. We can now label our horizontal line as our waistline. Next, we are going to plot our apex to waistline measurement upwards from this created waistline. To do this, I tend to plot the measurement all along this crazy pattern rectangle that we have created in order to make a nice straight horizontal line. And this line that we create is our bust line. The next measurement we are going to plot is half of our apex to apex measurement and we are going to plot that firstly along our bust line coming out from centre back and then the same coming out from centre front. We are then going to also plot those measurements along our waistline as well. Using a vertical line, we are then going to join those points from bust line to waistline like so. At this point, we can now create the dart on our back bodice. Now a standard dart is usually one inch for the back bodice, so we are going to plot half an inch either side of our apex line at our waistline. We are then going to mark approximately one and a half inches down from the apex point then joining those points to create our dart like so. Next, we are going to plot our waist measurement along our waistline from the centre back. To do this, we are going to plot one quarter of our waist measurement along the waistline, making sure to add an inch because we've added our dart and also adding a quarter of an inch for ease. So from centre back along the waistline, you're going to plot one quarter of your waist measurement, plus one inch for the dart, plus a quarter inch for ease. We are now going to plot along the bust line. Now, if you decided to use a standard bust measurement, you will plot one quarter of your bust measurement along the bust line from center back. If you decided to use chest front and back measurements, you will plot half of your chest back along this line. With each of these measurements, you will add a quarter inch of ease. 
Now we are going to join those two points like so and you can really see the pattern beginning to come together. Now it's time to work on our shoulder and necklines. First I'm simply going to square out from the top of my centre back line like so. draw a parallel line one inch below this to create the back shoulder slope. Along that top line mark half of your shoulder to shoulder measurement. From that point mark inwards your neck to shoulder measurement. You can now create your back neckline by joining that inner point to the centre back along the lower shoulder slope line like so. Here I am using my French curve to do so. Placing the edge of my ruler on that neckline, I am then going to pivot my ruler to plot my neck to shoulder point measurement onto my shoulder slope line, like so. And there we have it, we now have a neckline and a shoulder line on our back bodice. It's now time to work on the armhole and the most successful method I've found for this is to use one sixth of your bust measurement plus one inch of ease and to plot this on your pattern down from your shoulder point. I then square out to centre back from that measurement, extending the line slightly further forward than the shoulder point, like so. I am then going to divide this armhole line by six, then marking one sixth from the base of the line, like so. Divide this armhole line again, this time by three, marking the thirds along the line. On the first third marking, we are going to come in half an inch and make a mark. These measurements are going to help us create our armhole curve. It's now time to join up those points to create our armhole curve and it's times like this that a French curved ruler can come in really handy to help you create that wonderful sloping curve. Having created our armhole curve, it's time to label your back bodice block because you guessed it, it's finished. How accomplished do you feel? So now that we've finished our back bodice block, it's time to work on the front. And the first thing we are going to do is to create the dart on the front of our bodice. Front darts can vary in terms of how much difference there is between bust and waistlines, with dart sizes increasing as the difference increases. Standard measurements for A to B cups are around 1 inch, whereas DD plus darts can range from 2 inches upwards. Whichever dart size you decide on, plot half of its measurement either side of your front apex line.
then come down from the apex point one and a half inches because we do not want Madonna cone boobs this time. <laughs> Joining those points create your front dart. Next, yes you've guessed it, we are going to plot our waistline measurement along our waistline. To do so, you are going to plot one quarter of your waistline measurement, plus a quarter inch of ease, plus the amount you just added for your dart. Mark this along from your centre front. Now we are going to plot the bust line. Along this line from centre front, you are going to mark either one quarter of the full bust measurement or half of your chest front measurement plus a quarter of an inch for ease. Now simply join up those bust and waistline marks. Now working on the front shoulder, we are going to square across the same as we did for the back shoulder. For the front shoulder slope, we are going to come down one and a half inches rather than the one inch we did for the back bodice block, squaring across that line like so. Along this top line from centre front, we are then going to mark half of our shoulder to shoulder measurement. From this mark, plot your neck to shoulder measurement minus a quarter of an inch. We take that quarter of an inch because your front shoulder to shoulder measurement is usually less than your back shoulder to shoulder measurement. Mark a point two and a half inches down your center front line and you are then able to connect these points making your front neckline. Next, as we did with the back bodice block, line up your ruler on your neck point, pivoting it down so that your neck to shoulder measurement reaches the lower shoulder slope line. And then you will have created your front shoulder. Now it's time to create your front armhole. Once again, using one sixth of your bust measurement plus one inch, mark that measurement down from your shoulder point like so, squaring across from that measurement. Once again, mark one sixth of this measurement from the bottom of this line, marking also the measurement in thirds like so. From that first third mark, I am going to come in towards the centre front five eighths of an inch and make a mark. Taking my ruler, I am going to square up from my bust line point up to the armhole line. With the help of my trusty French curve and a bit of patience, I then join all these points to create my front armhole. Also, do not forget to label your pattern pieces as I often do. There 
is one final thing I need to do to finish this front bodice block. When I took my measurements, my front shoulder to waist measurement was two inches longer than my back shoulder to waist measurement. So this currently means that the side seam on my front bodice block is two inches longer than the side seam on my back bodice block. To rectify this, I am going to create a bust line dart. Because the side seam is currently 2 inches bigger at the front, my dart is going to need to be 2 inches. To create this bust line dart, I am going to plot 1 inch either side of the bust line at my side seam like so. I am then going to place a mark 1.5 inches along the bust line from my apex point. Then all I need to do is simply join these lines to create my bust line dart. Now my side seams will be equal and my bodice block is finished. Here is the finished bodice block. One final thing, these blocks or slopers don't traditionally include a seam allowance, so you will need to add that to your pattern before you use it. The benefits of this are firstly that you can decide on your own seam allowance, even half an inch, to be even more frugal with your fabric. You can add that allowance all the way around your pattern before you cut it out. But personally, I simply add the allowance on as I cut out my pieces. This also means that I'm less likely to cut into my pattern itself too. But the decision is completely up to you. To assess the fit of your new bodice block, I suggest making it up out of inexpensive calico or cotton. Remember to first add your seam allowances and then stitch the darts, side and shoulder seams. Tack a zip into the centre back. Try on this fitting bodice and assess the fit. Are the darts too high or low? Could you use more or less ease at the waist or bust? Does the shoulder slope need raising or lowering? And is the arm side too loose or tight? Then you can add any needed alterations to your block to perfect the fit personally for you. The possibilities are endless and you've created an excellent foundation for future pattern making. My wonderful friends out there there you have it it really is that simple take your own measurements and create your own patterns starting with this bodice block so coming up very soon on the channel we will be creating a sleeve to add to this foundation a trouser block and a skirt block too so stay tuned but until next week Thank you again, as always, for your support. This is Evelyn, signing out. Bye-bye.